This project started out with a question. Why is it so hard to find translators in my school? This was my starting point because I teach in a Title I school with a student population that is 62% Hispanic and only 24% European American. The remaining 14% is an incredibly diverse mixture of students from Nepal, China, Iran, Kenya. In fact, we have students from all over the globe. I need translators for parent-teacher communication, for conferences, for so many things. So why don't we have any? Then I began to notice all our signs are in English. No one in the office speaks anything but English. Most of the literature in the office is in English. We offer no foreign language classes. Our ELL classes are only half day and the lady who instructs speaks no foreign languages. So we were not user friendly to people who were at least a large minority of our users. I started to wonder, how does this look to our families who are not familiar with mainstream culture and not fluent in English? How does this look to a student coming into our school? And I realized I really couldn't imagine. But I had an idea who could. I teach gifted 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students and my classes are very diverse, especially my 7th grade class. I have students from Europe, a student from Nepal, I have a first-generation Chinese student, Hispanic students, along with students who have never been out of Colorado in their lives. So I asked them, how does this school look to a newcomer? Someone who may not speak English as their first language? Someone who is new to an American school system? And their answer was not very friendly. They said things I expected and things that I had noticed. We don't have bilingual signs and we don't have translators easily available. We offer no bilingual classes, but they said things that I hadn't thought about. We have very limited elective classes, the kind of classes where you don't need a strong command of language to do well. We don't offer foreign languages so that students could sympathize with how hard it is to learn another language. And we don't take time to appreciate all the wonderful, unique students we are fortunate enough to come into contact with. As one student, student put it, they have to learn about us but we never get the chance to learn about them. That's sad. So I gave them a challenge. Make a presentation to the building stakeholders, letting them know what you think is important to make our school strong and welcoming. And this is their project. My name is Tori and I helped on this project. Konnichiwa, watashi no na meho tamen desu. Dera, watashi wa kono project ni koken. Hi, my name is JJ and I worked on this project. Hi, my name is Chiana and I helped work on this project. Bonjour, mon nom est Roy et Jere et Cersei Project. Hi, my name is Cassie and I help work on this project. We love our school! <laughs> more welcoming to people who don't speak English. We could offer more elective options like photography and like Moto class was actually taught in another language. It would be great for students who needed extra help in English or for students who wanted to learn better in another language. Some students lose out on our grade school because we don't have another foreign language and they want to take one. And we also have kids from other countries. We don't want to lose. They, we don't want them to lose out on our grade school because they don't understand the classes. If we had classes in other languages, that would help out everybody. We go to school with all different types of kids. The kids from other countries get a chance to learn 
about our cultures and traditions. They have eaten our food, met our people, and most of them have learned our history. We should give a chance to learn about all these kids. It is our belief that if we get the chance to learn more about their cultures and traditions, we will understand them better. It would allow students to express where they come from. Um, people can learn about different places about the world. Um, you can see different people, uh, the different places, the food. You can learn about the different people who live there, learn about the landmarks and are there that are there and their history. Discuss, and you can discuss the traditions of that. Um, our ideas were a photography class, a video design, a video game design class, and um, uh, drama and improv class. Artistic classes are a great, great way for students to express themselves. Someone might not be very great in core classes, but they might have a lot to offer if they can have an artistic class. We have lots of students who would uh, love to have a photography class or drama class, and we have a lot of students who would love to learn how to design video games. Being an elective classes are a great way for the GFG students to mix with the biggest GFG and everyone gets to know each other. Uh, for our part of the project, we got signature not including all classes and all students because there are kids missing and we couldn't go into all of the class in just a few periods. Other things we could do, we could have signs in English and Spanish to direct people in our school. We could have more inter interpreters for parents when they visit. We could offer worksheets in English and Spanish for some classes. Most people would like to speak or already speak, but there's also like just like French or something like German who hardly any people know who we could try to bring in with like Japanese. I like the idea of having a, a class that's taught in that other language. What a good, a good way to learn. Yeah. I, you know, I, 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 in, immersion in a language like that is yep. the best way to learn. How college courses do that. You don't, you don't, you don't speak, you just speak that language. You don't, you don't. My freshman year. The first bilingual schools were actually started in the U.S. by Polish immigrants in the 1600s. Today, there are many kinds of language-focused schools in the U.S. There are bilingual schools for kids with limited English skills. These schools teach kids in their native tongue as a bridge to learning English. The bridge can be short, fast-tracking kids into all English, or long, kids learning in two languages over several years. Then there are immersion or dual language programs. The goal of these programs is for students to leave high school completely biliterate. And of course, some traditional schools teach second languages as one of many academic classes. All kids benefit from speaking more than one language, and learning a second language when young actually develops brains in powerful ways. Not all language programs are right for all kids. Children with language-related disabilities may have a tough time with immersion programs, and they're not right for every parent either. Helping with homework can be challenging. but. Language programs are worth considering. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so good, Rachel.